Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to our virtual science classroom. This is your teacher, da, teacher Daryl Del Mundo. And right now, we are going to tackle about quarter four, week number three, part B. And to start with, let us have a short prayer. Thank you very much. And for our secretary, once again, do not forget to check the attendance. Get the number of boys and get the number of girls, then add it up, send it to our group chat. Is that clear? Okay, so we are going to proceed on our lesson number two of quarter four, week number three, which is all about interactions in the atmosphere. So last time we talked about solar energy and layers of the atmosphere. So how they interact and uh, what are the things that being related from one to another was our discussion last week. So on this part, all the things that happen in the atmosphere is going to be exciting, okay? Because we are going to deal with different interactions that happen in the atmosphere. So after knowing the different layers, now the different interactions in the atmosphere. So as we look back, all you have to do is to answer this part. All you need to answer is if you are agree or disagree. Okay, for example, we have this statement. Number one, the layers of the atmosphere are arranged in the following order. We have mesosphere, troposphere, stratosphere, and thermosphere. Actually, it has one missing exosphere. So all you have to do is answer agree or disagree with this statement. So for an instance, number one, this is disagree because that is not the proper order of layers of the atmosphere. We have troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere. Then the last is the exosphere. Okay? So just accomplish the following numbers. And for lesson number two, let's dwell in the interactions in the atmosphere. And as a brief introduction, I have a question for you. So how do warm air and cold air behave? So we have example number one and example number two. Example number one is a smoke from a burning, maybe we can say a paper, a burning wood, or kahit anong masusunog class. Okay? You can see that smoke goes upward. Okay? On the other hand, we have example number two. Okay? This is a fog. Sa Tagalog ay hamog. So usually, uh, it is very visible when you go up to Tagaytay or to Baguio. Okay? Well, how do warm air and cold air behave? Based on this example. Any idea? Okay. So the answer is, rising smoke from a flame shows that warm air rises. Ibig sabihin, lahat ng air that is being warmed, it goes upward. And on the other hand, cold air from the refrigerator freezes or freezer make you feel that cold air sinks. Kaya yung hamog or yung fog class ay bumababa. Kasi ang cold air, it will sink while warm air, it will rise. So, for instance, this diagram. So, you can see that warm air rises and then when it it is cold, it will descend or sink. So it goes like a circular motion or a cycle. Warm air goes up while cold air goes down. Okay? Do not forget that. And another question. How do we explain such behavior of warm air and cold air? So how do we, are we going to explain those behavior? So we have here an, another example from a hot air balloon and molecules of hot or warm air. What can you say about this one, class? I know that you are familiar with hot air balloon, so it rises up, right? So, because it has flame. And how does it happen? Okay. So, the answer is, warm air has fewer molecules per unit volume than cold air. Warm air is therefore less dense than cold air so in other words class the density of warm air is lower than 
that of the cold air. That is why the hot air balloon goes upward because the air molecules inside the balloon becomes lighter. Okay, so that the hot air balloon will float into the air. So uh, if you uh, saw different lanterns on the air, it's because the air inside that balloon or that lantern is being what? Being lighter. So class, in other words, the density of warm air is lower than that of cold air. So that's why inside the hot air balloon, the air molecules there is being heated and it becomes lighter. That's why it rises up. Uh, for example, in a floating lantern festival or a Chinese lantern, actually it's very dangerous but you will see a lot of floating lantern when you go to different Chinese festival at uh, marami kayo may kita doon ng mga lantern up in the sky and it's because of that warm air inside that lantern becomes lighter that's why it is floating okay but when it becomes colder it will sink okay or it will go down that's why as you can see here the air molecules is very fast and making that air or the space inside that balloon becomes lighter and it will go upward okay that's why smoke also goes upward and how about this one what happens when a mass of warm air rises we have here two different motion pictures okay i want you to look at warm air so we have here the warm air and we have here the cold air Okay, very good observation. So rising warm air results in atmospheric low pressure. On the other hand, sinking cold air results in high atmospheric pressure. Maybe you are familiar with LPA, low pressure area, and HPA, high pressure area. So it is very related here. So when, when warm air goes upward, it will result in low pressure. Okay, but when there is cold air, okay, it will result in high pressure. Okay, so let's have another question. What happens when two adjoining masses of air differ in pressure? So we have warm air that results in low pressure, while cold air results in high pressure. So when the two meet together, and when they are adjoined together, what happened? The answer is, so the air moves from the area of higher atmospheric pressure to the area of lower pressure. So this is how wind originates. Do nagsisimula ang hangin. Okay? If the two pressure adjoined together, that's where wind originates. Okay, do not forget that. So, what is the instrument used for us to be able to measure these pressure? So, measurements of atmospheric pressure are very important for weather prediction. In weather reports, you often hear of terms such as, as low pressure area, like what I've said a while ago, or ridge of high pressure area. Atmospheric pressure is measured with a device known as a barometer so this is the example of a barometer as you can see it will uh, change from time to time it can be at its low point or at its highest point it is very changeable from time to time so it can be a low pressure area at this point and it can be high pressure at this point it depends okay and it is very important because it is related to our weather weather forecast or even uh, it's a, it is a day-to-day -day basis so low pressure area systems or low pressure systems are characterized by upward motion of air so which can lead to cloud formation and rainfall that is why low pressure systems usually bring bad weather okay and high pressure system wind spirals outward in a clockwise manner. The sinking air in high pressure system is warm and free of clouds, thus associated with clear skies and good weather.
that is why that is the reason that why your parents when it is very hot or for example we have a very sunny day they will predict later it will rain or usually sasabihin ng mga parents na sobrang init ngayon diba so mamaya uulan yan and that's the reason behind because good weather is the result of high pressure area and bad weather is the result from low pressure area kasi maraming warm air ang nagrise so maraming clouds ang mapo-form okay and basis of clouds you know what will happen it form nimbus clouds that responsible for rain or having a bad weather so how about an equal heating so what is an equal heating an equal heating of earth surface results in differences in temperature that is why in different area of the earth we have different temperatures or climate or weather so warm air in the heated areas expands and rises leading to lowering of pressure at the surface the pressure difference leads to the movement of air in the surface which we refer as wind generally wind flows from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure so this uneven heating of earth creates low pressure and high pressure differences okay we can guess or think in what part of the earth has the warmer place or colder place i guess you have a lot inside your mind let us look at this way okay so we can say it this way when the air rises it will result in low pressure area but when the air descends or sink it will result in high pressure area as you can see class these illustrations simply shows the unequal distribution of heat in our world or in the earth so as you can see the heat of the sun basically focus of the center part of the earth because the earth is tilted at an angle of 23.5 degrees and those different and equal distribution of heat results in different pressure okay so we have here at the polar zone high pressure and then we have low pressure here in the temperate zone we have high pressure and at the middle of the equator so at the middle the equator we have a lot of low pressure system that is why the philippines is near at the equator and we have a lot of typhoons okay and simply because we are located where the low pressure area is formed from time to time then we have another high pressure area located near the tropic of capricorn and then low pressure area near the temperate zone okay and then another high pressure area in the polar zone that's why formation of typhoons and other tropical cyclones are not that common in these places so that's how is those different and equal distribution of temperature results in different pressure system and then we have pattern of winds we have here illustration a and illustration b so the question in these diagrams where in diagram a is the philippines so i want you to look at the philippines here very good so this is the philippines and now let us see how the global pattern of winds in diagram b affects the wind systems in the philippines so we have westerlies and we have the easterlies okay so the wind system in the philippines is the northeast trade winds okay it means that the air or the wind is from northeast while here on the other hand from southeast winds or the easterlies okay so let's talk about wind start with the diagram a that what we have a while ago look at the high pressure zone so we have here here and here and over here at 30 degrees north south of the equator these high are 
characterized by the descending cold air that rushes towards the low pressure zone at the equator. The winds blowing from 30 degrees north towards the equator form the northeast trade winds, while the winds blowing from 30 degrees south towards the equator form the southeast trade winds. That's why we usually experience a lot of tropical cyclones and typhoons in our country because we are the hot spot. Okay? So how about winds and monsoons? Maybe you are familiar with this. Because of the geographic location of the Philippines, again, we are near the equator and we are in the middle of the Pacific Ring of Fire, meaning to say we have a lot of volcanoes around the Philippines and we are the direct, uh, we get the direct heat from the sun. So uh, the major wind system, prevailing winds in the country are the following. We have number one, northeast trade winds. We have northeast monsoon, which is known as the amihan or hanging amihan. And the third one is the southwest monsoon, which is the hanging habagat. We know that hanging amihan brings cold air or cold wind while hanging habagat brings not just cold wind or cold air it brings also raindrops or water droplets okay so let's proceed monsoons are seasonal so these winds especially in the indian ocean and southern asia they originate from the trade winds and are characterized by heavy rainfall the northeast monsoon originate from the northeast trade winds. The southwest monsoon originates from the southwest trade winds and curves in a southwest direction as it crosses the equator. So as you can see over here, this, this is an example of movement of these monsoons. Okay. Since the Philippines is near the Pacific Ocean, where a lot of warm air evaporated from that ocean and that place becomes where the tropical cyclones and all the typhoons form. Okay, since it is from the northeast uh, monsoon, it, bring, it will bring what? Cold wind. But if it is, came from the southwest trade winds, it will bring heavy and as you have observed, it is usually happened after the summer days. Okay, so after the summer days, it has a lot of uh, water vapor where warm air rises up into the air and accumulated. That's why uh, during uh, June, July, August, September, it will become rainy seasons. So remember that monsoons brings cold and wet weather. So that's why we have two major climate here in the Philippines. So let's talk about Northeast Monsoon or the Hanging Amihan. So Northeast Monsoon, this is the illustration, while Southwest Monsoon or the Habagat, this is the illustration. Okay. During the colder months in the Northern Hemisphere, a high pressure area develops over India and Southern Siberia in winter because of the colder air over them. So the mass of cold air then moves, okay? It will move towards the Philippines from a northeasterly direction. And this, it prevails and cold morning experience in the country from December to February. And that's the reason why we have a colder wind during those months. From December, January, February, we experienced that because of the colder climate in India and southern Siberia during the winter. On the other hand, southwest monsoon or the hanging habagat happens in our country during summer, during summer days or summer months in the northern hemisphere. The Asian continent becomes warmer than the oceans. Remember, solid heats faster than water. Okay. So, marami ding water vapor sa land part. So, lahat ng land area, it becomes hotter and everything that's surrounding it. So, what happened is that 
a cold air mass develops over the Pacific Ocean and begins to move towards the Asian continent. So, this prevails rainy season over the Philippines in the months of July, August, and September. So, we should expect it from time to time. It is a yearly routine. And let's talk about local winds. So, when we are talking about local winds, we are considering the extensive coastline of our country since we are an archipelago. We are in a country which we consider as an archipelago, meaning to say we are surrounded by water. So the north-south orientation of various mountain ranges, the presence of lakes and other bodies of water, the directions of the prevailing winds are somewhat changed in the different localities. These are called local winds. So local winds are best presented by land and sea breezes. Water and land have different heating abilities. The land is opaque and the sun's, sun's rays reach only the surface layers which can be heated in a shorter time. While it can penetrate water deeper and it takes a longer time to heat its surface. We can also uh, incorporate this into the heat transfer. Remember that solid heats faster than liquid. And since water is very deep, it is very hard to make it hotter than the land. So remember that land heats faster than the ocean. And also, because land heats faster, it will become the reverse when at night. Okay, so when during at night, the land cools faster than the ocean. That is why, for example, nag-swimming kayo sa beach, okay? Sa land area, malamig na yung hangin, but when you go to the ocean, you will feel the warm water. So, mainit-init pa yung tubig. It's because at night, the water cools slowly, okay? And let's talk about first land breeze. So, when we are talking about land breeze, it's all about the sun. Okay? With the sun gone at night, so wala na tong araw, we can say that our preference here is the presence of the sun in land breeze and sea breeze. So, wala nang araw paggabi. The land soon cools. By then, air over water is warmer than the air of the land. So the warmer air over the sea rises, the cooler air from the land rushes towards the sea, replacing rising warm air. So the wind blowing from the land is called land breeze. Okay? So this is happens at night. And we have sea breeze. So sea breeze happens during daytime. The land warms up faster than water, heating the air above it. The warm air over the land rises. The cooler air over the sea rushes towards the land, replacing the rising warm air. The wind blowing from the sea is called sea breeze. So this happens during the day. So when it is at night, the wind or the breeze that is present is land breeze during the day, the breeze that is present is sea breeze. Now let's talk about Intertropical Convergence Zone or the ITCZ. The northeast trades meet the southwest trades somewhere near the equator, about 5 degrees north, forming what is known as the Intertropical Convergence Zone or ITCZ. When the warm air moist air charging from opposite directions meet, they force the air upward and rising warm air, known as the doldrums, results in a low pressure zone at the equatorial region. That's why usually there's a lot of rainfall or formation of intertropical convergence zone, tropical cyclones, and soon to be become the typhoon near the equator. It's because of this intertropical convergence zone. So... We always remember that in this module, it is highlighted the concept of 
the use of the explanation of common atmospheric phenomena. So, for example, why the wind blows, why monsoon occurs, and what is the so-called intertropical convergence zone, like what we have tackled a while ago. It is important for everyone to understand the varied atmospheric phenomena so that we can all prepare. Because this is uh, a, a, a must for us to be able to prepare all the things because for an instance, it's summer day and uh, you are planning to go to the beach. But unfortunately, it will rain. So it's, it is really bad for whatever changes that occur in the environment and cope with these changes. For example, this one. Let's have this example. Okay, so you are in the beach, but you will not enjoy it because there's a storm or a typhoon. And you know what to wear. So when it is colder season, use to protect your body and make it warm. And we can apply this in our daily lives in weather, weather lamp because it's very important for us to know the weather of the day for the next day. For example, we usually watch weather forecast because it predicts the weather for the next couple of days. So we can prepare, for example, we have a vacation. Okay, you will be able to know what to bring and what not to bring. So what is the difference between weather and climate? Weather reflects the short-term condition of the atmosphere, meaning to say, from time to time, it will change. It can be cloudy, it can be windy, it can be there's a little bit of rain or entirely sunny in one day for a short period of time. On the other hand, climate is the average daily weather over time and space, meaning to say it is a longer period of time. Okay, For example, we have uh, climate winter, spring, summer, or fall. Okay, That's a longer period of time. Weather, it can change from time to time. And I hope you learned something for our quarter four, week number three. And do not forget to answer the following. Watch this video or rewatch this video and answer the pages in lesson number two. Answer page 13 for the pretest and pages 19 to 20 for the post-test. So if you have any questions or any clarifications, do not be hesitant to ask me to my social media accounts. You can reach me through these social media accounts, okay? And that's the end of our quarter four, week number three, part B. So let us all meet next week. And I hope you learned something today. This is your teacher, Daryl Del Mundo, signing off. Goodbye and God bless you all.